Hey guys, this is Jim in 4 ycd and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So we have a new gadget. This is new to me. It is not a new device. This is a pre-owned, pre-loved Flex 6300. This is not the current model Flex. This is an older model, six to eight years old, something like that. According to the Smokin' Ape, that's so old it's been discontinued twice. It's still a flex radio and it still works great. I've had this two or three weeks now. So I wanted to do a video and talk about what I found out about flex radios. First, let's take a look at the hardware on the front of the radio. And the, the box itself is about 13 by 14 and a half inches square and about one U in height, a couple inches, something like that. Let me turn this around so it's right side up for you. On the front, the only controls or interfaces we have are a power button, a soft power button, microphone connector, headphones, and CW key. The mic connector is a standard uh, airplane style connector that screws on. The power button is soft touch. My one complaint here is that the mic is right next to the power button, so if you're messing with the mic connector while it's turned on, you're probably gonna bump that and turn it off, or vice versa. Little irritating, not a big deal. On the back side of the radio, we have, let me get this thing arranged, we have two antenna connectors, and these can be used in an either-or configuration. You can transmit on either one and receive on the opposite. You can have a different slice transmitting and receiving on a specific antenna. You can transmit and receive on the same one, and that's all controllable through software. We have the ground lug connector. A nice feature here is that this is a thumb screw and not the usual Phillips head screw. So if you're trying to reach over and connect the ground wire, you're not trying to manipulate a screwdriver and see behind the radio. Pretty easy to do. Power, standard power pole connections, which is cool, built in. It has a remote on jack and a, a remote transmit jack. I don't know specifically what I would use that for, but there it is. The remote on jack allows you to do a remote power on, power off of the radio, a proper start up and shut down remotely. You can use the device that Flex has. Uh, there's other options you can use for this. You just need to short these together and that causes the power state to flip. But it does a controlled shutdown, not just a hard power off like unplugging it would do. So you could use this theoretically with a smart plug to power the radio on and off. I have not got that set up yet. I probably will in the future. It has this 15 pin accessory connector. I don't know specifically what plugs in there yet. I don't have any accessories for the radio itself. So that's something I'll explore in the future. We have a eighth inch stereo jack or jack, audio jack for a powered speaker setup. We have our connectors here for an amplifier. And then the connector here for an external transverter if you want to use this on 2 meters or 70 centimeters. Um, I believe this also can use other transverters besides those two specific frequencies. That's something I may explore way down the road, but nothing I'm interested in at the moment. On the right side here, we have the Ethernet jack. That's how this radio is controlled, is over the network. And then we have two USB connectors here, USB-A style for accessories that plug into the radio that way. I don't know specifically what all those are. There's a bunch. I haven't explored any of those either. That covers the physical aspects of the radio. There's not much else to this case. I like the size of it. It's a small footprint. It doesn't weigh that much. This is probably not even 10 pounds. So when you compare it to something like a Kenwood 570, which I've done a video on, which is about 15 pounds, or my IC7610, which is 15 to 20 pounds. This comes in as a little bit lighter weight, which is cool. The radio is software controlled, and we'll get to that in a second. You can also buy a unit called a Maestro, which is a control head. that's I don't know, probably about that big. That's also a network compatible device, and you plug that into your network. I believe it's wireless or wired. I don't have one yet. And that allows you to use that interface to control the radio. And so you could use that at a remote location. So if you're visiting relatives, you could bring your control head, connect it to their network, and then you could manipulate your radio that way. I assume it also has a mic connector 
or has a built-in microphone and speaker set up. I'm not sure I don't have one yet. The other options you have for connecting up to this from Flex are the Power Genie, which I believe is a, a amplifier. And then of course they have a, a USB knob that you can plug into your computer to manipulate the software. And the knob is yay big and it has a knob on it and then several programmable buttons around it. So you can set those for like band change or whatever and then the knob could be used to adjust frequencies. So those are some of the accessories. And again, I don't have any of those, so we're not really gonna talk about them any more than that. The radio is controlled by software. The software comes from Flex. It's called Smart SDR. It's provided free. The current version is 3.33, I think. And uh, that's available for download on their website. It runs on your Windows PC. You can install it on as many Windows PCs as you want. Through their SmartLink software, it allows you to connect to your radio specifically remotely over the internet or local area network, either way. There is other software available to control the Flex made by various vendors. I haven't explored any of those options and probably won't. The Windows version is great. Um, there's also a Mac version that's officially supported by Flex called Smart SDR as well. It, is, it costs $150. It is an additional purchase through the Apple App Store. And that's so you can control your radio from a Macintosh computer. We're going to take a look at the Windows software today and go through some of the features of the radio and see what some of the things are that we can do and how we control the radio. Okay, so what we've got here is the main screen, the main program to drive the Flex radio. There are three programs that we can use with the Flex. Depending on what you're doing, you may not need the other two. We'll talk about those briefly. That's Smart Cat, which interfaces with this program to do cat control. The second program that we're not really going to talk about a whole lot is Smart DAX, which is digital audio interface. We also use that with something like WSJTX, and that allows us to pipe the audio over the network to whatever application is using it. So this is the main screen of the Flex Radio software, Smart SDR. This up here in the top center is our slice and the settings for the particular slice we're on. I only have one slice running right now. Um, everything that this will do, a second slice will do. So starting up here at the top, we can change our antennas. I can change to receive on, uh, blue is receive. I can change which antenna I'm receiving on from the antenna I'm transmitting on and any combination thereof. This tells me what audio processing I have enabled. So I have noise reduction and automatic notch filter on. This is my particular receive bandwidth setting. This shows us whether we're operating split or not. And this is the slice that we'll be transmitting the next time we transmit. This is the first slice, so it's A. There's our frequency. I'm on 14304. I was doing some POTA hunting earlier. And then down here are the various settings, similar to what you'd have on any other kind of radio. Um, you click these, and it blows out into a little, little drop-down window where you can adjust the various settings. So I can set my noise reduction level, turn it on and off, notch filter, noise blanker, and wideband noise blanker. And then of course there we can change our band and our, um, our not our band, our mode, USB, uh, upper side band, lower side band, so on and so forth, as well as what kind of bandwidth we want for our signal. And then here we can set our RIT and our XIT settings and then this is to modify the DAX for this particular slice. So I only have one. I'm using channel one. And this is where I would tell the system which DAX channel I want to use for this particular slice. So if I was using WSJTX, I would have one DAX on channel one. I would have a B slice and its, its DAX would be on channel two to use the second audio stream over the network. So that's basically, this is, this is like a control window. And you can lock this, and that'll keep you from accidentally changing frequencies by rolling the mouse knob or anything. You can also do a quick record, and you can also uh, play back from here. If you go over here to the left side, you have this box 
of different functions. You can pop it in and out. This is where I'd add a slice receiver. This is for adding a tracking notch filter, which is really cool, and we'll look at that in a second. This is our band selection. This is similar to a band select on, on any standard radio. This is our antenna selector, and this is where we'd set gain, and we can also set the wideband noise blanker specific to each antenna. And then on our display, this is where I can change parameters for my uh, spectrum display as well as my signal waterfall display. And then this is controls for the DAX again. And some of these controls are duplicated here, so either place, whatever makes you happy. Obviously, this is our spectral display. We have our signal waterfall. You can move about the display and move where you're looking at on a given band. So we're in 20 meters here. And just by grabbing up here anywhere, I can move around and scooch the display over. So now I'm at 14304 on the high end of my current display and 14244 down here on the lower end of my display. That does not actually change my frequency. And now, no matter where I move it, I'm just moving 14304 to where I want it on the display. I'm not changing the frequency. Rolling the mouse wheel gives you fine control on moving what frequency you're on. You can double click on a signal, and then that gets you close, and then you can roll the mouse wheel in to zero in on the signal, which I love that feature. That is excellent because you're not ever going to click exactly on the signal the first time. Right here, let me move that back to the center. If I grab the edge of this shaded area, and I want you to look here, we're at 2.2k receive bandwidth. I can grab him and change my receive bandwidth. Super awesome. Just doing that on the fly. I don't have to go over somewhere else to do it. I can just grab it and tweak it. Anyway, so that's an excellent feature. Okay, over on the right side, we have what I call the control panel for the radio. I'll be honest, I, I haven't discovered all the functionality that this does. You can turn on or turn off any of these panels as required. So let's say that, um, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. So we have equalization. So we have separate equalization for transmit and receive, which is a common feature. I like the way this is displayed because we have this graphic equalizer down here so you can tweak the frequency range up or down in very fine increments which is which is awesome and then we have transmit and it's on as well let's say I don't want transmit equalization on I click transmit make sure it's off and it's still off however my receive equalization is on so if I don't want to fool with for example with the equalization I can come up here to the top where it says EQ and turn off that um, that part of the control panel so I don't have to look at it anymore. The control panel also pops out. There he is. Let's just drag him over the middle. So there's our control panel. And this is cool if you have a couple monitors because you can move the control panel over onto another monitor out of the way and use all your screen real estate for the actual uh, radio part. So I'm not going to be doing CW. I can turn off the CW. And then here I have transmit parameters. We have profiles for our transmit parameters. So once you get this tweaked to your specifications, then you can save it as a separate profile. There's some that are, are built in, and I so far have been using the, the built-in ones. This lets us tune the radio, sends out a lower power tuning signal that you can set here. So I've got my tuning signal set for 21 watts. I do not have a flex tuner, so I have a LDG tuner hooked up, one on each antenna at the moment, and uh, that will kick off the tuner on whichever antenna I'm transmitting on, which I can look up here and see that's the one in red. And then MOX means uh, key and unkey the transmitter. Here I can adjust my uh, power. We have a power meter and an SWR meter. These adjust in real time. Down here we can set our Vox on and off, and we can mess with our downward expander. I have not played with that feature or these filter features either. Um, I really don't know what a downward expander is, so I have not tinkered with any of these. This is separate power level for our AM carrier, I believe. 
And since I've never played on AM, I, I haven't tinkered with that setting. And then down here on the bottom is a lot of the same functions that are on this little uh, box up here on top center. Here is their step for when I roll the mouse wheel. Then, of course, there's your frequency. There's your current transmit bandwidth, which antenna you're on. And all this stuff tends to duplicate this little box up here. That's all I have for today. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Y'all have a great day. 73.